If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own first before listening on. The question is asking us to determine how many feet of copper can be obtained from this ingot. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And in essence, what the question is asking us for is the length of copper. Now, the question notes that H in this equation right here can represent either height or length. So our job is to find the value of H, which again is the length of this object. So we could do that by writing out the formula for the volume and then we can divide both sides of this equation by pi r squared so that the pi r squareds cancel on the right side. We can see therefore that the length is going to be the volume divided by pi times the radius squared. Now the radius is relatively easy to obtain because the question gives us the diameter as 7.5 millimeters. And we know of course that radius is equal to the diameter divided by two. So in fact, we can actually substitute D divided by two into this equation. What's more challenging to determine is the volume of this object. And to help us determine the volume, we have a clue over here. We have the density of copper. Now, density is equal to mass divided by volume. We can actually solve this equation for the volume by multiplying by V on both sides. It'll cancel out on the right. And then to isolate volume, we can divide both sides by the density. So we see that volume is equal to mass divided by density. And the question gives us essentially a mass of 150 pounds and then the density. The problem here is that these units are inconsistent. We have the mass in terms of pounds and then we have the density in terms of grams. So our challenge becomes to get those units to be consistent with one another. And so let's come in here. We'll go ahead and plug in the 150 pounds for the mass and then we'll plug in for the density the 8.94 grams per centimeter cubed. But what we need is for the units of mass to cancel and right now they're not going to cancel because one is in pounds and the other is in grams. Well if you open to the back of your chemistry textbook you will see that we have a conversion from pounds to grams and according to that conversion we see that one pound is equivalent to 453 0.59 grams. Now you'll notice the way that we're setting this up is very purposeful. We have the pounds in the numerator here and then the pounds in the denominator here. So those are actually going to cancel out and that's going to leave us with grams in the numerator. Now if you look really carefully you'll see that the grams up here in the numerator will cancel with the grams down there in the denominator. And that's going to leave us with a unit of centimeters cubed. So what you can do is pick up your calculators, you can multiply 150 by the 453.59 and then divide by 8.94. That will give you the volume in centimeters cubed. And when you do that, you should get about 7610.57. And again, the unit will be in centimeters cubed. So this is the volume. We're going to end up plugging this volume into our equation that we had solved for for height. The only thing we have to be careful about next is that our units for volume, which are centimeters cubed, are not consistent with the units for diameter, which was in millimeters. But we can alleviate that inconsistency by changing the diameter into centimeters. That way it would be consistent with centimeters cubed. So let's come down here and do that. We know the diameter is 7.50 millimeters. We also know that one meter is 1,000 millimeters. Again, notice the way we set it up so that the millimeters will cancel out. And then one meter is also 100 centimeters. And these meters will cancel out. So if you pick up your calculators and perform this calculation, you should end up with 0.75 centimeters. So we have the value for D. We have the value for V. We're gonna go ahead and plug them into this equation here. So here they are plugged in. You want to pick up your calculators and just make sure you compute this very carefully. Note that we've divided the diameter by 2 and then after dividing it by 2 we're squaring it. So just be careful how you plug, plug this into your calculator. But when you do this you should get 17,226.8 roughly. And then if we look at the units we have centimeters in the numerator and centimeters squared in the denominator. So if you have centimeters cubed divided by centimeters squared 
you're basically dividing the centimeters, and when we divide, the exponents subtract. So 3 minus 2 is 1. You end up with centimeters to the first power, which of course is just centimeters. So this is the answer in centimeters, but of course we're not done because the question wanted the number of feet of copper. So now we've got to change the centimeters into feet. And to do this, you want to go back to the back of your textbook and refer to the conversion factors. And we can see one of the conversion factors tells us that one inch is equivalent to 2.54 centimeters. And by setting it up that way, we're going to cancel out the centimeters. And then most of us know that one foot is equivalent to 12 inches. And then we can see that the inches will cancel out. We can finally pick up our calculators and process this. And when you do that, you should end up with about 565. And then the remaining unit is feet. And so this would be the correct answer to the question. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, click the thumbs up and subscribe so you could stay tuned for other videos. Remember that you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.